I can't imagine not working on comics. Storytelling is a huge part of the way my brain works. And it's all I do is just obsess over Aro especially, or whatever comic I'm working on at the time. My name is Tara Hamilton. I make comics. I do a lot of illustration, mini comics. I work on an ongoing series called Aro. A lot of post-apocalyptic stuff and self-deprecating humor. That's what I'm into. I started drawing comics in middle school, so I wanted to keep making comics in high school, but I wanted to find a writer. Finally, at the end of university, I found someone. Her name is Allison Burke, and she is the writer for Aro, and I do all of the illustration, paneling, and everything. Hey, it's you! Hey! Go to the last, like, three pages. So we haven't talked about those at all. So she used to live in Chattanooga, but she moved to Boston, and we've been working through a program called Slack. I owe you the next chapters of Arrow. Yeah. We've been working on Aro for ten years now. Um, Aro is a multinational organization going in to North America after a collapse of civilization from a disease through the waterway. They are a humanitarian group coming in to make it livable for all of the American refugees that no one wants. It's like Greenpeace meets Walking Dead. This is the map of all of the refugee areas. So it's, it, there's a lot of socio-political uh, overtones, but it's a really quiet story because it's mainly focusing on eight people. The best science fiction is always a reaction to like the, what's happening currently, the the tone of what's happening in our country and in our world right now, and like bring those elements in. So the environmental approach is something that we were both really passionate about to begin with. So we did a ton of research about waterborne illnesses, and Chattanooga is a waterway kind of city, so it makes sense that that's something we were drawn to when we first started researching. So the Chattanooga Creek was like back in the 1990s one of the most polluted waterways in North America. This was the 10 years ago thing. A lot of the research is kind of like scary and that it's coming true but the story is hopeful and heartfelt enough to to motivate someone to want to see change in the world. <laughs> This is part of the comic. This is, this is the location of the big battle scene. Drove about 45 minutes from Chattanooga to take reference photos of a gas station. So Allie and I both like to go out to the actual locations in the comic. We're taking vacations just to get photos of the location. That sign was really important because the entire book is just a road trip from Chattanooga to Nashville. So I wanted to have that in at least one of the last couple of pages. Oh, there it is, right over there. We gotta cross the street. This is one of my designs. There was a call for art to go on these electrical boxes. Chattanooga is known for like hiking and, and doing all these like outdoorsy things. I got paid just to draw it, which was fantastic. Here's the other one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just a bunch of cats. This is the only one that people actually like walk up to me and talk to me about. They're like, oh my God, I saw your cats on a box. I think the, it works against graffiti enough, but somebody's already keyed it. Like scratch the crap out of it. As a comics creator, you definitely have to keep a social media prep presence, but you have to do conventions or else you're just screaming into the void of the internet. We try to ha do at least five conventions a year. Going on the convention scene, I felt really isolated as soon as I got home. I was so used to these creative communities that as soon as I got back, I was like, oh, this is it. So I founded this group, the Chat Comics Co-op, and become this huge creative group that is 
a huge well of joy for me. 12 to 24 people come every first and third Monday to the meetings and we make anthologies. I have a day job at a print shop where I just so happen to also print everything I sell. Not for free, of course, but it is super easy. So this is my day job. I kind of screwed myself with the whole student debt thing. I need to have a job. Comics don't pay the bills. But I like having a stable income. I don't want to only produce stuff just to make a profit. Otherwise I'd be making comics about cats all the time because that's all that sells. I like where I'm at. As long as I'm able to make stuff when I can, that's what really matters. But it'd be nice to be able to focus wholeheartedly on my creative work. Uh, one of those distant dreams. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh. My husband, he's very supportive of what I do, but it isn't something that he's super into. But it's nice to have the separation from my wonderful home life and this very intense relationship with comics.